welcome you to Vacation Bible School. Um, we are elated that you are here with us today. Our theme for this year's Vacation Bible School is Armed for the Kingdom. Our theme scripture it comes from Ephesians 6 and 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So before we get started, we're going to have a moment of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we just say thank you. Thank you, oh God, for our life, giving us breath. God, we thank you for the young people who will come in and join us for Vacation Bible School, touch their lives in a special way. Lord, help them to learn to be armed with you, armed with your word, armed with faith, oh God. Lord, we ask that you build up the children in the kingdom, oh God. Keep them safe from danger, seen and unseen. Lord, grant them peace that passes all understanding in the times we're living in. Touch the hearts and minds of our young people, God. We forever give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So, like I said, our theme for this year's Vacation Bible School is Arm for the Kingdom. So, to this evening, we are going to talk about arm with faith and our scripture is going to come from daniel chapter 3 verses 10 through 25 i'll give you all a moment to get your bibles out and turn to that scripture reading with us it's daniel 10 i mean i'm um, excuse me it's daniel 3 verses 10 through 25 and it reads your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zypher, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up. Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zypher, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. That Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Mm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this manner. If we are thrown into a blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shad Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his attitude towards them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men were wearing robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into a blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then, then Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire they replied certainly your majesty he said look i see four men walking around in the fire unbound unharmed and fourth 
looks like the son of God. Wow, that was a powerful scripture reading. In this scripture, we see so many things that is important today. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood firm in their faith that even if King Nebuchadnezzar threw them into the fire, that God would deliver them. So, King Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to bow down to gold and material things. But the God we serve says that we bow before, no, we put no other gods before him. How many of you have heard that in Sunday school or your pastor or bishop preaching that you don't bow down to any other gods, that God is the only God you serve? How many know why we are not to bow down to any other gods or any other things besides God? Anybody? So, when the king got upset, he threatened them. But, the, but because they wore the shield of faith, so our theme is the armor of God, we're armed with faith. So, part of the armor of God is the shield of faith. And they used that shield, their faith in God, knowing that no matter what, it would protect them, right? We have to remember that sometimes whatever's going on, that we put on our breastplate of righteousness and our, you know, and God's word is our sword and the shield of faith, meaning our faith in God will protect us against anything that's going on. It will protect us and keep us safe because we believe and remember that God's word is true and that God never leaves us nor forsakes us. Who knows what that, excuse me, who knows what that means that God will never leave us nor forsake us? I want you all to think for a moment. We hear everybody say God will never leave us or forsake us all the time, right? God will never leave us means it doesn't matter what we're going through. Even when it doesn't feel like he's there with us, he's right there. So imagine what we're going through right now. We're protesting. Um, our lives are being put in jeopardy because of the color of our skin. And because of what we look like, people are afraid of us, right? We have to remember that. Even in our darkest time, in our darkest hour, and right now we're in a dark time for black. We've been in it for a long time to be an African-American. God has always been there. So your faith in God, knowing and trusting and believing that he's going to do just what he said he would do. Our faith in God's word and God keeps us safe from danger seen and unseen. A lot of times during Sunday school or children's church, we are telling you to don't worry about anything. I teach I teach our young people, we're small, but we're mighty in the kingdom. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Meaning, just because you are young, eight, nine, 10, however old you are, that you are small, but you are mighty in the kingdom. Your faith in God at your age gives us so much more power. It makes the devil afraid and our enemies even more afraid because now we've got young people serving God and having faith in God like never before. So right now, I want all my young people to stand up on your feet. You're going to stand up and you're going to shout, I'm small, but I'm mighty in the kingdom. Let me hear you say it. I'm small, but I'm mighty in the kin kingdom. I am a chosen generation. God chose you for this time and this purpose. He's not going to forsake you. He's not going to turn his back on you. He's not going to talk about you behind your back. He's not going to bully you. He's not going to make you feel bad for who you are. He's going to stay right there with you. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. He's going to stand firm with us 
as long as we have faith in God, he's always there. So young people, we are small, right? Y'all feel like, Minister T, I'm not that big. I'm just a little kid. Doesn't matter. You are small, but you are mighty in the kingdom. And your faith in God is what the devil is afraid of. It's what your enemies are afraid of. It's what people who are not our skin color are afraid of. Because they know that we are a chosen generation. We're chosen by God. We have strong faith. We have strong beliefs. And we know that God can do it. So we know God can do it, right? So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego... They refuse. They ref they refuse to alter or change what they what they believed in. They they refuse to let King Nebuchadnezzar make them bow down and worship anything but the God they serve, right? So although they would be cast they knew they knew that the king was going to cast them into the fiery pit these three men knew god the god they served would deliver them from any situation right how many of you young people know that it doesn't matter what it is if you're nervous about a test if you are afraid you're going to get in trouble because you did something wrong it's kind of eh. Even though you did something wrong, God's going to deliver you from, I don't know, y'all help me. No, I'm just kidding. God's going to deliver you from from anything that you're worried about. If you're sick, if you're, you're worried about your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, God's going to deliver you. God's going to be there with you and bring you out of this thing, right? And sometimes, for example, say you are... A young black child in a school that's made up of mostly Caucasian people white people right and you feel separated and cast out and people are mistreating you and your prayers God just let me have a good day at school God please let them not pick on me today God please not let them judge me because of who I am let them get to know me first. God can deliver all that meanness and all that dislike and bullying. He can deliver you from those things. He can bring you out of it. He can heal the land. Right now, our land, our nation is suffering from racism and police brutality and discrimination. And our young children, some even your age, are getting killed for, for no good reason. And it's not okay. And as a nation, as a body of Christ, as a in unity and solidarity, everyone's coming together. We're coming together and we're demanding that we be treated fairly. That's just like, that's exactly what this story is really trying to teach us. That no matter what, you're going to stand firm on what you believe in. You're going to come together and put on your whole armor of God. You're going to be armed. You're going to be armed with the faith and, and knowing that God's going to do just what he said he's going to do, right? You're going to you're going to stand firm in that. And because they stood firm in their faith, they were delivered from the fiery furnace. Can you imagine what King Nebuchadnezzar had to be thinking? How are these men in a furnace a fiery furnace that i set seven times hotter than it should ever be that means that's like if you turn the stove on and you just need to boil it on a little low fire and then all of a sudden they turn it up to high and it gets hotter and the water boils over even faster that's how high king nebuchadnezzar turned that furnace up he wanted them to burn and he wanted them to be in even more anguish and even more pain. And then they fall in tied up and bound. This is bound. So this is tied up. So where did my little rope go? Hold on. 
Oh, okay. So, imagine. Ooh, ooh, sorry. Imagine this. He bound them. He tied them up. He made them bound, right? They're tied up in their bound and he tosses them. Well, no, they don't. He, they didn't get tossed. Because the men who bound them fell in first. So, they're in there, right? And they're bound. And the, the fire and the flames are so hot, they still fall in. Even though the people who tied them up and bound them first, guess what? There's your first point. The Bible says, touch not my prophet and do, and do my children no harm. Touch not my anointed and do my children no harm. Those men that bound God's children who bound Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they fell in first, right? They, the fire consumed them first. So they're bound. They're bound. And they still fall in. But they're not worried. Their faith. They're firm in their faith. Knowing that God's going to bring them out. So they're in the fire. And they're bound. And and we're, they're human. So I'm sure they might they may have been a little afraid. It might have hurt a little bit. But then, they, then all of a sudden King Nebuchadnezzar says, didn't we throw those three men into the fiery furnace and his his servants or they're like, yep, we sure did. Then who was those four men unbound? See, God unbound them and God got in the furnace with them. He unbound them. Can you imagine what King Nebuchadnezzar's face was like? Now, how in the world are those men in that fiery furnace flaming hot? raging hot and they're now unbound and they're walking around and who is this fourth person then king nebuchadnezzar realizes that has to be the god they're talking about the god that they stood firm in their faith in and stood up to king nebuchadnezzar and said nope mm -mm. nope you're not gonna get me you're not gonna get me because my god is gonna deliver me the God we serve is going to deliver us. And we have to remember that. We have to always remember that even when the situation looks dim. And even when the situation looks awful. If you have faith in God, if you know God, if God delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of a fiery furnace, that he could deliver us from just about anything. He can deliver us from this police brutality. He could deliver us from racial discrimination. He could deliver us from bullies. He can deliver us from anything. Right? So two things we learn from this story. First, we as believer, we can we must not fear. We must not fear whatever's going on. We must not fear any situation because God is always there with us. He will be there with us. And we can learn because our faith in God is the best shield to guard us from the voice and the trap of the enemy. So, our faith in God is our shield. You know what a shield is? You hold up a shield like this. Pretend I have a shield. If you got a shield or a toy, pole, shield, you got a Halloween costume, anything, you, you use it as a shield, right? I'm going to use my Bible. I'm going to use my Bible as my shield. So I got my shield up. Not only is this my shield, it's God's word, right? God's word does not return to us void. So I got up my shield. And it, it guards me. It protects me. You can move your shield around. So if something comes at you this way, hold it up. Something comes at you that way, put up your shield, right? You have your shield. Your shield of faith, it guards you from anything the enemy throws at you. <clears throat> it's important that you put on the armor of God. It's important that you remember that in the midst of trials and tribulations and turmoil, and right now our nation, oh, our nation is wreaking havoc first we had COVID-19 right we had to stay in the house and we couldn't go outside because it was dangerous you could get sick just from doing 
from being around somebody, too close to somebody. So we had COVID-19, right? So it came and made everybody go in the house. It made you not be able to go to school. You had to do school from the computer. It changed our whole world and how we live. But what it didn't change is our faith in God. What it should not have changed is your belief that God can deliver us from COVID. God can deliver us from discrimination. God can deliver us from bullies and meanness. God can bring you out of anything. And, but you have to have faith. You have to remember to stay armed. You have to put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Wiles of the devil is any kind of trick the devil's going to throw at you. Any kind of anything. He can use your friends and your families to trick you and to, and to mistreat you and to try to harm you. So when we pray, we always say, Lord, keep us safe from danger seen and unseen. We can't see COVID, right? We couldn't see COVID. We just knew it was there and it was spreading and it was making our friends sick and our family sick and our loved ones sick. And some of them passed away, right? We lost some loved ones. But God is still faithful because we might have lost a loved one, but he might have saved some somebody else close to us. And even though they passed away, <coughs> they get to go be with Jesus a little bit sooner than we do. So I just want you to be encouraged and serve in God's kingdom. Be strong and mighty in the kingdom. You're small. You have purpose. I'm small, but I'm mighty in the kingdom. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, right? You are small and mighty. And there is nothing too hard for God that he will give to you. God can give you little young ones, eight, nine, ten. He can give you the power to speak and heal and deliver. Just like he gave Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego the power and the faith to stand up and know that God's word is true. And if I call out Jesus' name, if I stand firm and I believe God's going to do just what he said he's going to do, he's going to bring me out of it. Have any of you seen those videos of little young kids protesting? She's saying no justice, no peace. She can't be no more than six or seven years old. Ask your mom or dad or whomever you live with to pull, try to find that video of that young little girl, five, six years old. She's leading a group of hundreds of protesters and saying no justice, no peace. She's small, but she's mighty. God gave her a purpose and a praise and a mission. And she, she's long. She's little like you. She's young. She's a, a young child. But she's leading because she knows that this is bigger than her. And no matter what, she's not alone. You, she's leading this protest and she's got all these people and God. So you can lead. You can show some of the, young, the, the older people to mm -mm, be strong in your faith. God's not going to do that. God's not going to let no harm come to you. God's not going to let you falter and run in fear. He's going to hold you firm in his word. And as long as you believe he can do it, he's going to do it. So I want you to no longer be afraid. I want you to know that we are in a spiritual fight. And no matter what, your shield of faith, your word of God, it's always there. God is always there. So you're going to put on the whole armor of God and you're going to go out and you're going to serve God's kingdom and you're going to stand up for what's right. And you're going to trust God and know God's not going to leave you nor forsake you, right? He's not going to leave you nor forsake you. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, 
attached are some games that you can learn i mean that you can play with mom dad sister brother cousin friends you can download them and print them um i just want to let you all know that i appreciate you all from tuning in to vacation bible school virtually remember to stay armed with faith remember you are small but you are mighty in the kingdom god chose you for this occasion i love you all and be blessed so we just want to have a word of prayer before we officially close out again i like to say thank you parents grandparents aunts uncles cousins thank you for allowing your young people to tune in to vacation bible school here at mount zion apostolic church where bishop lambert wade gate senior is our pastor we thank you for just giving us the opportunity to teach your young children on this week oh god and we just we're elated that you all tuned in we look forward to seeing you again soon um so let's close out with a word of prayer father god we just say thank you god thank you for the lesson oh god thank you for your faith oh god thank you for building up our faith oh god thank you for your word oh god thank you for these young people who tuned in to vacation bible school oh god thank you for their hearts to still want to learn and do your will oh god and keep them strong and mighty in the kingdom they're small oh god but give them fill them with the knowledge and the confidence to know that they have purpose and praise oh god thank you for their life oh god protect them from danger seen and unseen no weapons formed against our children shall be able to prosper oh god god we love you and we praise you for their life we thank you for their parents oh god we thank you for this opportunity and this platform to, to reach out and connect even in spite of even in the midst of our circumstances god we still give you all the praise we give you all the glory and the honor and it is in your name god that we say we love you and we thank you in jesus name we pray amen young people i look forward to seeing you um hopefully in the near future we love you be encouraged keep your shield of faith with you at all times have a good one